You just trust the fact that all things, the good things and the bad things, the positives and the negatives, the ups and the downs, that everything that you're dealing with in your life will work out for your good. Just trust him. God knows how to make it good. In the end, he'll make it good. All is well in the end, and if all is not well, it's not the end. Oh, we trust him. We trust him with all of our hearts. We really do. We really do. Father, we lift our hearts to you today in the name of Jesus. We seek you as the giver of every good and perfect gift from above, the one who offers our destiny. And the very destiny in us that you offer, you also obligate yourself to finish. And we yield ourselves as instruments in your hand to say, God, use us to bring about your will in the earth. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will so charge our lives that we are able to impact others around us, not merely impress them, but impact their lives by our character, by our conversations, and by our conduct. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will so breathe on us, that your light will so brilliantly shine through us that those who sit in darkness will be illuminated and will see clearly your light. Father, we covenant in advance to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for everything that shall be done in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Well, if you would, turn in your Bibles, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. And we'll find here the word of the Lord for today. Jeremiah chapter 20. Very interesting passage of scripture here. Jeremiah chapter 20. Beginning with the very first verse. Now Pasher, the son of Emmer, the priest, who was also the chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. And then Pasher struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And notice down in verse 7, here's Jeremiah's response to his unpopular ministry. He says, O Lord, you induced me and I was persuaded, and you are stronger than I and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted violence and plunder, because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. And then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a fire, burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. I want to talk today about handling frustration. Handling frustration. If you live in this life for any considerable period of time, it is not a matter of if you will be frustrated, it's a matter of when. All of us deal with frustration on some level or another. Some people handle it okay, and other folks just make a total mess of it. And they do things that they later on regret. And so I want to share some teachings with you that I believe will help you in being able to handle the frustrating things of life uh, that you may not necessarily understand. As you know, Jeremiah was sort of uh, labeled as the weeping prophet because uh, God rarely ever gave him prophetic things that were uh, positive. They were always judgmental. They were, uh, it seemed negative. It spoke of some, in, uh, some impending doom, some judgment, some uh, correction, some calamity, death, war, captivity, all of these kinds of things. So he, he, he sort of began to feel that he was just the bearer of bad news. And that didn't make him feel good about himself. When oftentimes 
what you do that is right feels so wrong. Now, you know that, that, that sometimes God can, can have you to break off a relationship with somebody, and it's the right thing to do, but it leaves you feeling so wrong? There are some decisions that are right decisions, but they feel so wrong, and we get frustrated because it's the right thing, but it feels so wrong. God can tell you to leave a job that you were in love with and that you thought that you'd be able to retire from, and it, 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 uh, you know that it's the right thing to do at the time, but then the consequences that it brings into your life will make you second-guess yourself and wonder, did I do the right thing? Because when you make some right decisions and right judgments, there will be negative consequences. And you can't help the consequences. You can't stop the consequences. We have the right to make the choice, but we don't have the right to choose the consequences. And so there are some consequences oftentimes of doing right. And you had nothing uh, to do with it. And, and now here he is prophesying things, speaking what God tells him to say. He's not making stuff up. He's not just being negative by nature. It's that the people that he's speaking to are wrong. They are rebellious. They keep doing the wrong thing, and so God doesn't have any good news for them. God is saying, listen, either you straighten up or you're going to die. And he's prophesying things through Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is having to say some hard things. If you ever have to correct anybody, you, you don't, don't expect them to just start kissing your hands and feet. If, if a mother has to correct her children, if a father has to correct his children, if you've got to straighten out an employee, if whenever you have to do correction, it's doing the right thing, but you get a negative backlash. And Jeremiah got sick and tired of getting this negative backlash. It's one thing that when God begins to speak to you and he begins to tell you that uh, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I formed you and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Before you were even formed in your mother's womb, I called you to do this, Jeremiah. And you know, that can bring great confidence, you know, when you know that you're operating in your God call and destiny. But it also brings confusing uh, feelings in a person where he felt frustrated because you would assume that if you obey God, that everything is going to flow smoothly for you. But you know, when you begin to mature in the things of God, you'll realize that you'll do right and you will suffer for doing right. I've taught you that there are only three reasons that we suffer. We suffer for doing right, we suffer for doing wrong, and we suffer for no apparent reason. There's something that we don't know what, no, you, have you ever been in a relationship and you say, what I do now? What? What? What I say? What, what, what did I do? And you can't even figure out what you did? Did you know that sometimes it's not about anything that you did, it was what happened to the person before you got there? And they can come in frustrated. And when you are around frustrated people, you can't do anything right. It's not even about you. It's that somebody else is dealing with frustrating circumstances in their life. But I want to show you how Jeremiah was going through some things because this is a prophet of God, called of God, ordained from the womb. And you would think that if you are doing the will of God, speaking God's word, being obedient to God, that everything is just, he's going to always put the wind to your sail. And he's going to just propel your cause. And, but no, 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 you're going to deal with some antagonistic wind blowing against you, circumstances that are totally contrary to what God said. And you won't understand why is this happening to me? If this is you, God, why is this happening to me? How do you think Joseph felt when God gave him a dream and then his brothers began to give him a reality that was in total contrast to the dream that God gave him? That's when we get frustrated because it's like, Lord, you didn't show me this. I didn't sign up for that. And I want you to see here, sometimes when you read the Word of God, uh, you don't understand it because oftentimes we're reading in the King James Version and, and, uh, and we don't understand. But I want you to see this. You see this in verse 1 here. It says, Now Pasher, the son of Emmer, the priest who was also the chief governor in the house of the Lord, 
he heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Now here is another priest. This is another priest who hears Jeremiah talking. And notice what he says, and Pasher struck Jeremiah the prophet. In other words, Pasher, this other priest, because Jeremiah was prophesying things of God, beat the slop out of Jeremiah. He beat him up and locked him up. Can you imagine being in the ministry and get beat up by other folks in ministry? Oh, God. But the man got beat up by another priest. He got beat up by another priest because he was obedient to what God said. You would assume that if you obey God that everybody's going to just celebrate you and thank you and tell you how wonderful you are because you were doing the will of God. You were obedient to the will of God, but he got beat up by a priest. A priest beat him up and then locked him up. Notice. Pasha struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were, uh, that were in the high gate of Benjamin. The stocks, you know, those things, you know, they put your feet in stock and they put your hand in stock. They, they, he beat him up and locked him up. Did he get beat up and locked up because he was doing something wrong? No. He got beat up and locked up because he was doing the will of God. Doesn't it aggravate you when people look at something in your life and then they say, mm. They must have sin in that camp. Because you're having a hard time because you're going through stuff. Folks don't know what you have been through. They don't know what you did. They don't know why you are going through what you're going through. Listen, you don't even know why you're going through it. And he was doing the right stuff, living for God, and got beat up and locked up living for God, doing the will of God, trying to help folks, trying to correct people, and he got beat up by other folks that were in ministry. Can you imagine how frustrating it is if you obey God and get beat up by somebody else in ministry? Can you imagine the frustration that you would feel with God, the same God that said, listen, Jeremiah, before you were in your mother's womb. Jeremiah was like, I don't even want to hear any of that. God, you seduced me. You tricked me. I didn't sign up for that. You didn't. Why didn't you tell me all of this? He's frustrated out of his wits. Had God told you all of the stuff that you were going to deal with in your life, you would have said, God, I am not signing up for that. I'm not going, I'm not. And, and, and he just, he, out of his frustration, he said, I'm not going to say another thing. I'm sick and tired of helping folks. I'm not going to do it anymore. People don't appreciate what you do. You try to tell folks the truth about themselves and they get offended with you. And Jeremiah said, I, I'm through with it. I am through with it. I'm not speaking another thing, God, in your name. I'm, I'm finished with it. I, I see where my trying to do right and proclaim the word of the Lord has gotten me. And he is frustrated out of his wits. And, and I just want to show you some examples in Scripture of where people were frustrated, and in their frustration, they made foolish decisions that affected their destiny. Because your decisions decide your conduct, your character, and your destiny. And if you are frustrated amid temporary circumstances, your frustration can drive you to making some foolish decisions in your life and you can have terrible consequences only because you were frustrated out of your wits. Now, in Numbers chapter 20, here is another leader by the name of Moses. And God gives instructions to Moses in Numbers chapter 20 and verse 8, and he says to Moses, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you will bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. And so Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. In verse 10, And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said to them, 
Hear now, you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? He was so fed up with those grumbling, complaining, griping, mealy-mouthing people who were so negative and weren't even thankful for the stuff that Moses was doing. And here Moses is in the leadership position, and he's working for them, and they're not even appreciating him, and Moses is frustrated out of his wits. He says, I can't even do enough of it. Listen, you've already been delivered out of Egypt now. You, you don't have, you're, you're no longer slaves, and now you're complaining, talking about we should have left you in Egypt. Now, which is it? He says, I'm sick and tired of you. I can't even get you to do right. God, the same God that does miracles and delivers you out, and you come out here and make a golden calf. You, I can't even, you rebels, you all make me sick. You're going to make me lose my religion. Moses is having a hissy fit. He is, he is just, he is frustrated out of his wits because these folks have been murmuring, griping, and complaining, and judging things that they don't know anything about. And notice, he said, here now, you rebels. He was not thinking very favorably of the children of Israel. Must we bring water out of the rock for you? And then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And what did God just tell him to do in verse 8? Speak to it. He told him to speak to it. And because he was disobedient, he didn't speak to the rock. Out of his frustration, he struck it. I wonder how many people today are being struck out of frustration. How many times do mothers and fathers and guardians and teachers and police officers strike people instead of speaking to them? Listen, this rock that followed them in the wilderness was Christ. And you are to speak to the Christ in them instead of taking the rod of the word of the law and trying to beat it out of them speak to the christ in them when you begin to speak to a, a disobedient rebellious child instead of trying to beat the devil out of them maybe you ought to speak to the christ in them god made them they are made in his image and after his likeness speak to the image of jesus christ and say sweetheart you're better than this this is not who you are you are a real winner on the inside. You're a champion on the inside. And speak to the rock instead of striking it. And Moses disqualified himself from entering into the promised land because he couldn't obey, because he acted out of frustration. I wonder how many times we have kept ourselves out of a promised land of something that God wanted to do for us because we got frustrated and struck something in our anger and frustration because we don't handle frustration well now this is Moses the man that talked with God who was a friend of God who dealt with God on a very intimate level and God shared his secrets with him the Bible talks about how God made known his ways unto Moses his acts unto the children of Israel you see, the children of Israel could see what God was doing, but God explained to Moses why he was doing it. He made known his ways unto Moses. Moses was God's boy, and, and, and God's boy got frustrated with human beings and made a tragic mistake that affected his destiny. And notice, God said to him, as a result that you didn't handle this frustration well here, notice what he said. After he took the... the uh, in his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod and water came out abundantly in the congregation and the animals drink and notice verse 12 and the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron because you did not believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them you will be surprised over individuals that have forfeited things because they didn't know how to handle frustration how many times have you been frustrated? May I show you another case of frustration in Scripture? The Bible is full of them because it's, it deals with the story of mankind, human beings. And whenever you have human beings, you will deal with frustration if there's more than one. If you're in a relationship, you can be the only two people on an island, and I guarantee you, 
that that other person, I don't care how close you are, it could be your ace, your ace boom coon, your dog, your partner, you know, all of that. And at some point, they're going to rub you the wrong way, and they're going to cause you to be frustrated, and you'll be scratching your head saying, why did they do this? All that I asked them to do was, and you are frustrated. Frustration happens oftentimes because of a lack of understanding and communication. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. But in Judges chapter 6, in Judges chapter 6, the Lord had spoken concerning the, uh, the Midianites that were oppressing Israel. They cried out to God for, for deliverance. But let's notice and pick up the story here in verse 12 in Judges chapter 6. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all of this happened to us? Now, here's an angel of the Lord. Now, angels, were, uh, the word angel means messenger. This is a messenger. This is really God talking to him, but he's talking through the messenger. I mean, don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the guy who's bringing the mail. <laughs> this is God. And God is sending him a message saying, I am with you, you mighty man of valor. And, and, and in Gideon's frustration, notice how he responds to the Lord. Oh, my Lord, if the Lord, if, if, if the Lord is with us, why is all this stuff happening to me? Has the devil ever told you that God was no longer with you, and if God was with you, all of this stuff would be happening to you? He's, he's, he's making a judgment call here and say, you know what? When all of this mess has happened to me, God has obviously left me. I am not operating in God's favor. His favor is no longer on my life. I must have done something that's displeasing to God. He says, if the Lord is with us, why then has all of this happened to us? And where are all of his miracles, which, which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. He said, if God's with us, why is all this stuff happening to us? And where are all the miracles? You hear other people talking about how they got blessed and how they got delivered. Where are his miracles? If God is with us. It's hard to convince people that God is with them when they're having trouble. It really is. And that's frustrating because you come in and you hear somebody saying, praise the Lord, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And you're going through hell. And somebody is saying, God is good all the time and all the time. God is And, 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 you, and you're like, well, if God is so good, now where are all of his miracles? If he is blessing people, where, uh, hello? You can drop some of that over here, God. And so he's going through frustration because what he believes in his heart and what he's seeing experientially is not lining up and he doesn't understand why and because he doesn't understand why he is frustrated out of his wits anybody ever been there to be frustrated because you don't understand have you ever had God to say something to you or about you and yet you have absolutely no evidence that it is true have you ever experienced uh, uh, something that was contradicted that God told you would happen and the opposite of that very thing happened? Have you ever had expectations and that uh, exceeded your capacity to perform them? When you do, the normal result of those things is called frustration. Now, I want you to understand this. Frustration is a deep chronic sense or state of insecurity and dissatisfaction arising from an unresolved problem or unfulfilled needs. It is a deep chronic sense or state of insecurity and dissatisfaction arising from unresolved problems or unfulfilled needs. And it's interesting to note that the word frustrate, say frustrate. It comes from the Latin word frustratus. It's the past participle of frustrare, which means to deceive. 
when you frustrate a person that person is deceived because you believe something that is not true and oftentimes there would be people that would pray against their enemy and they would say God frustrate them deceive them did you know that frustration when it comes in your life is a demonic attempt to deceive you to make you feel like God is not with you it worked in 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 Jeremiah's life he got so frustrated he was deceived that he was not God's anointed and that he was sick of this prophesying to the nation he said God I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this I, I know you said that I was anointed as a prophet to the nation you knew me before I was even formed in my mother's womb and ordained me a prophet to the nation and all of that I, I know but his frustration deceived him to the greatness of God's calling in his life have you ever been so frustrated that you couldn't see God's purpose in your life anymore Moses got so frustrated that he was deceived to obey God's word when God said speak to this thing he struck it and there are too many people that are striking folks and we've got too much domestic violence because they are living with frustrated people and when you do that when you do that it means that you actually X yourself out of the promised land that's what happened to Moses and so when somebody strikes you when you strike the rock you disqualify yourself from the promised land you mess it up you mess it up out of a moment of frustration because really the essence of it to frustrate means to deceive it's interesting now that lets us know that there is an element of deception in all frustration but the deception is only to fool you into believing that what you are believing for and what you are working toward happening will not happen thank you for watching power for living with bishop dale c bronner until next time god bless you